Welcome back to our VAP Expo uh, conference for the last afternoon of exchanges and debates. It's a great, great pleasure to welcome Aaron Beaver, director uh, based in the US, and Gaspar Koenig, president of Generation Lim. Um, your author, you have made different articles on ESIG and uh, reduction of risks. And this afternoon, it is the occasion for us to see different things and consider the challenges, health challenges, color, cultural uh, challenges, and also having an overview in order to analyze the uh, idea of that new product, which is, you know, changing the deal and really making a revolution in the uh, ideology and also how to deal with, you know, uh, the end of death and reducing death, of course, in Europe. Um, what is very important this afternoon for us is to discuss freely, giving the uh, floor also to the audience. First of all, I would like to wish to watch together the trailer of our own documentary, which is about to be uh, ended, and I think it will be uh, presented in Sundance, right? And Aaron, you have, you wish um, to, to see and uh, have, you know, the opportunity to meet the different persons which can contributes to the vape movement and see the obstacles, see, you know, all these aspects. So let's have a look at the trailer. has been done our battles not quite won so let's take it to the streets let's take it to the streets and sing for the sun Uh, really, Aaron, it's the number, estimation of persons who could, you know, dare, dare, die, you know, prematurely of that causes. I mean, that's what the, uh, some of the projections out there, 1.6 billion smokers uh, in the next 20 years, and then by the end of the century, you know, if you look at one out of two smokers eventually dying from smoking-related illnesses, you're looking at, you know, a billion, a billion people dying from smoking. So it's obviously a pretty pretty big number. How did you uh, consider vaping? You're not a vapor, but you have friends who did, you know, sensibilize you on this topic, and did you decide at a certain point to say, we need to talk about that, to discuss about these topics, because they are quite surprising? Right, yeah. One of the big reasons for, for me was that I don't, you know, with some of the other things like food in, in our country, in the United States, we see that there's all kinds of crazy things going into our food and there's um, you know obesity rates and, and some of the things that you see happening you know outside of smoking are, are very dangerous to society and public health and then you know I have friends that are, are vapors and, and I felt that when I saw for, for instance the formaldehyde study that, that came out in the New England Journal of Medicine when uh, this was all over the news saying that oh uh, Vaping is more dangerous, may cause more cancer than smoking. And I, I said to my friends, like, you know, that's bad, right? Yeah. And pour vous la désinformation. This information for you, as we said this morning, with the report of Public Health England saying that you know we have 95% uh, less harmful as compared to cigarette, traditional cigarette. A lot of Europeans, you know, in a people all over the world uh, thought, you know, vape was even more harmful than tobacco. So it is disinformation, although it is criticized by the British report, is anyway being organized according to, to you? 
Right, and, and that's, that made me angry when I, when I found out that it was not true. Very, very angry because how many people out there that are, are advising people and are, are seen as leaders and thinkers you know, I have doctors that come up to me all the time now Now that we're making this film saying, hey, you know, Aaron, uh, be careful. Your reputation is going to be ruined when, when people find out how bad vaping is. You know, and I get these all the time. My wife just told me last night, she called, my um, children were playing a football game, and a doctor came up and said, oh, you know those are bad, right? Because she asked what the film was about and why I was over here. I hear this all the time, and it makes me angry because... People are being lied to, and, and they're being influenced to do things that are harmful. And, and when you talk about a billion people dying, I mean, this is more than people dying from wars or AIDS or, or many, many very serious things, way more than that. And yet, we allow it. We allow lying. We allow um, deceit. And, and, you know, as a, as a filmmaker, um, we have an opportunity to correct that. And so I, I wanted to I wanted to help correct that for the for the sake of uh, a billion people that may lose their lives. In that documentary you're shooting, you have already made an overview in the world. You went to Asia, to Poland, to Turkey. You're really, you know, traveling also in the United States and in America. And when 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 we see the regulation of FDA in the States and you know the European Union with the Commission and the European Directive on Products from Tobacco, we have the feeling that users who were in the core of that revolution, vape revolution, have like not the possibility possibility to, uh, you know, handle all these aspects and uh, react to uh, addiction. So how do you consider that aspect? And then what is the information that we should re-inject in order to change politicians? Well, I think, you know, looking at the, the information that we need to re-inject back into back into the discussion, you know, it's just the truth. You know, I think all too often what happens is you have, you have vapors um, who, who have a passion for this, um, but they maybe aren't, uh, maybe they don't have the public relations or the marketing, so to speak, skills that, that, that the other side has. I mean, on the other side, you have big pharmaceutical companies who are, are losing money from this. You have uh, governments who are really they need this money coming in from cigarette taxes. You have all of these very large organizations. We saw yesterday the, you know, California is going to spend $75 million uh, with an ad campaign discrediting vaping, $75 million. And they're using some of the best marketing people in the world to do it. So we need to, we need to re-inject the truth back into the discussion. We need to do it in a way that's polished because I believe that when you look at the public, who is who we need to win over, um, you know, the public expects things to be polished. They expect um, the most credible information to be packaged in a way that is easily understandable and, and is very, very credible. And it, unfortunately, it does appear that in some cases people, you know, uh, vapors have brought a knife, you know, to a gunfight. And, and, and unfortunately, they're getting, they're getting ki you know, they're getting hurt in this fight. And um, so truth is the, is the one thing, but we need to do it in a way that I think people the public understands. Gaspard? Okay, Gaspar, first uh, uh, question. Aaron is really one of the main uh, person involved in the vaping community, giving information and, you know, uh, uh, really diffusing information. Uh, now, what about products and usages? And uh, then maybe we should also deal with the behavior, the gesture, which is, of course, behind all this debate. How do you consider uh, these aspects? You've written a lot of articles, what is according to you VAP Expo event uh, with you know a lot of actors and international players uh, and uh, what is your opinion, what would you like to say about risk reduction on addiction? First, many thanks for your invitation. For me, it is excellent here, and I've tried my first e-cig a few minutes ago, and I do hope that, you know, I will continue. And, uh, in fact, you can feel the atmosphere of, you know, vapors and clouds, which was, of course, the same pleasure as cigarette, traditional one. But what is very important here, it is, you know, first, this aspect, and also the, the consumers, because consumers, of course, are the, you know, the real actors, and according to a practice, 
practice which can be criticized by you know politicians as you said well and public authorities public authorities are so important and you know they may really get adapted to the new deals so and then what is important is the multiplicity of brands. And then you can see that we're not like in the traditional cigarette in, a, you know, uh, two, three, four big brands. Here you have such a diversity of actors. It is incredible. You have so much innovation. And you can see it, you know, you know, e cigs come from the United States and uh, uh, some are like cigars. You know, it's incredible. You have so many innovative uh, aspects, even for design, you know, as compared to traditional cigarette, which is very much normal. And I think it's very pleasant to have people in the street having their e cig and, you know, it's something really social. We have a social aspect. In fact, we say vaping an e cig. Yes, it is new verb, vaping, to vape. Right. In fact, in this during this summer, we have new trends. Uh, we have different trends like cereals and also yogurt flavor. But you have so many, you know, aromas and pleasures. And I think we can meet a lot of, uh, you know, obstacles. Regulations are one of these. And uh, of course, uh, when people, you know, get out and quit addiction, they explain how they manage to do so. How do you explain that state and this? Uh, uh, you know, m like mood trying to regulate behaviors which are first behaviors, you know, in order to reduce risks and, you know, quit addiction. Uh, so how do you explain this? This is very interesting, you know, and in all the ways of thinking of politicians, why why would you like to forbid or prohibit a product which is considered as, as you know as, you know safe by a lot of doctors and authorities so what is your way of you know what is your reflection beyond that and this is so important because you know regulators have just added a third reason which is you know new brand new to reduce our freedom uh, the, I mean two reasons which are more classical first the uh, declaration of human beings and of course my freedom stops when you know it will hinder the other's freedom but then uh, we have secondhand uh, smoke and a lot of all other reasons which had been created since the 70s saying that will prohibit um, what is you know a nuisance and the state or you know the government can do something and has good reasons to implement them so of course that will legitimate the speech on classical tobacco and also all these you know ideas of from the past so I I am totally opposed to that logic. And in e -cig, you go beyond this because you have public authorities who, you know, of course, acknowledge that we try, I mean, we should try to, you know, give us the opportunity to, you know, uh, uh, give us the right response to a problem. So we have an extra responsibility for ourselves. And you do not protect people against themselves but you protect people against the perspective of freedom. It's quite complex. But anyway, it's this idea. And uh, I've seen in that debate in the Senate in France, you know, a few quotations from our politicians, very, very interesting. And they say this in a very clear way. In fact, let me find them. Michel Delaunay, Senator. Uh, says that using the cigarette must be limited in the same conditions as the e-cigarette because the gesture could be an induction, which means that the gesture of the e c could enhance other to smoke, to vape. But really, they think we are, you know, stupid. Really. And uh, how shall we, like, you know, prohibit the gesture of drinking water because it's the, the same gesture of drinking, uh, sorry, of drinking wine because it's the same gesture of drinking water. You know, it's just foolish. And second reason, which is here quoted even better, I may say, um, and I quote, it's really, uh, you know, 
verbatim, verbatim in the uh, exposure of these reasons to keep the acceptance, social acceptance of the prohibition to smoke in public places, which means that you will implement regulations in order to have people accept it and, you know, creating those prohibitions to have people accepted all the rest of the other's prohibitions. So you put it in the second place, actually. So that's, you know, impressive. It goes beyond the normal way of thinking because once more the legislature legislator sees there's not a reason, public health reason. And which are my conclusions then? Of course, first, we, you know, make like something more towards the democratic despotism, if I may say, and um, this bureaucratic also despotism, which means that you consider citizens as, as children, you know. And today, in fact, we think that people are not, you know, um, yet much mature or, you know, educated in all, enough to take their own decisions. So this is really incredible and a great paradox. And in fact, we will not continue uh, quoting Tocqueville, but anyway, you know, it's so uh, modern and up to date. Uh, and he says that, you know, day after day, the state and the power gives then less possibility to people to use their own way of thinking, you know, and then little by little for each citizen, you will just have like an extinction of your own way of thinking. And this is terrible. And this is beyond all according to me this prohibition and or, you know, for the prohibition in public spaces. Um, so this is totally negative And uh, I think that really it's nonsense. In a word, in a word, if I am right, Tocqueville gave a limit to that state of, uh, you know, like cool, uh, adjuvating uh, a person in his action. Where is the limit? Uh, you were dealing with, you know, water and, uh, you know, wine or whatever. Uh, are we are we really in a, in a childish way of considering citizens? and Or are we at the beginning of that, uh, you know, uh, movement? Well, there is a survey institute which, you know, tried to make first survey, according to me, asking people, do you think that there is too much prohibitions and constraints in France? It is, you know, a very interesting question, never asked, and results are incredible because 67% of the persons say yes, and three-fourths of, of these persons think it represents really uh, like something against private and individual freedom, and then it is a uh, creating a dangerous society and uh, like, you know, going and buy things to black market and uh, really incenting, incent giving an incentive to this. And uh, finally, these data are even stronger in the, uh, you know, most popular categories. For example, um, for elite, you can, you know, for elite persons, you can choose because you are well, you know, educated, but you realize that, in fact, the most popular uh, part of the population suffer, uh, I mean, having great, great sufferance for, from these uh, schemes because the others always try and manage to, you know, just go beyond this. So this awareness is really, really fundamental. And I think we have two different directions. First direction, which, which is, of course, uh, dealing with its own regulations and inventing even through e-cigarettes a lot of spaces and, you know, something like extra. and. On the other hand, the legislator totally disconnected, which will pursue in his like foolish idea and re wants to regulate everything, and will go to the obstacle of social and civic world. And then, second aspect, which which is uh, so the second conclusion, um, really fundamental, the reaction of the state to that, which is not the same, of course, because in the UK, as you said, the government will foresee to have reinforcement of ISIG by NHS. So you see, it's different. What is really good here in France, in French reaction. Well, it's just like if the state was 
jealous, jealous of actors, private actors who manage just where, you know, the state did not manage to do anything and having like uh, prohibition policies just were a disaster. And we had like three time increase of the prices of tobacco, 50% increase, didn't do anything, did not reduce at all. The uh, even not one tenth of, you know, to um, addiction in France, which is so uh, strong in France. And moreover, uh, a few words, uh, a few um, years after the introduction, we have a decrease of tobacco uh, addiction to tobacco. So, you know, and a lot of people quit quit it, uh, smoking thanks to e-cig. So we finally, we see that the society wanted to create means that no one would have in, you know, imagined. And the state is quite jealous of that success. And it's not so easy because um, at the end of the day, it creates new regulation. So it makes part of these fights that, uh, you know, uh, people like me have, uh, you know, enhanced. Aaron, just coming back to the uh, what Gaspar said, I wanted to come back to an incredible paradox in the States, which is cannabis. Um, you know, we are trying to make regulations uh, on, you know, vape in the US. And on the other hand, we hear Colorado and Oregon, uh, you know, different states are, you know, lib giving freedom for uh, cannabis. So uh, we think that, you know, vape will be really prohibitionist and while cannabis is legalized, uh, parenthesis in, in France, uh, French are the first consumer of cannabis after the Netherlands, five millions. So it, this shows that sometimes the difficulty for public authorities to put the right, you know, uh, 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 direction on products. So it's incredible that paradox in the States. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty crazy, um, but you know, for me, it really just comes back to the money thing. You know, it's it's really about money and who's who's against. You know, who has a really strong vested interest against cannabis? Uh, there's not as many big actors in the whole thing. You know, there's not as many big players on that side. Of course, I think big pharma probably. You know, when as more research is done on cannabis, and I've been seeing some of it. You know, some of the stuff is starting to look positive in some cases. I'm sure big pharma doesn't like that, but. It, um, but in the case of, you know, cigarettes, there's just so much money that, you know, so it is an incredible paradox. It makes no sense whatsoever, but, you know, it, it's, it's a money thing. That's, a, that's my only explanation for it. It's absolutely money-driven. As far as the um, aspect concerning control of people, of individuals, of in freedom and behaviors and practices, we often, you know, have the idea that the states are, you know, much, you know, beyond and have, you know, great uh, years, of course, and more uh, in that sense, and uh, there's more freedom. But do you think that, in fact, it is the case, or maybe uh, in the states there's the opportunity, uh, coming back to Tocqueville, the, the, the philosopher, that the you know human beings can you know uh, handle themselves freely I do believe that you know humans when given the information can absolutely make the right decisions of, of course they absolutely can and they've been doing it for thousands of years the problem what we have now is we have disinformation we have misinformation we have a lack of information and unfortunately that's what's causing problems out there when we don't give people the correct information they don't always make great decisions and yet you find that there are corporate interests that are, you know, in, in the states with food labeling. Like, there are people that are opposed to better food labeling. Why would that be? You know, money, you know? And so in the same case, uh, you know, you see Americans making some pretty terrible food decisions. And I don't think that's, be they don't need somebody to tell them what to eat. We don't need government m meal planning or anything like that. What we need is better information. I think in this case, it's the same sort of thing where you know, people are, are choosing cigarettes over vaping because they're being told incorrect things. And um, I think as soon as that, you know, I think as soon as that is changed and, and we start having an honest discussion, which will be driven by the public, which is why I encourage, uh, you know, vapors to, you know, to present these facts in the best possible way. And then the public will get on board and they will demand the truth. And once that happens, I think, you will see what you see, you know, like for instance, cannabis, there is something there. I haven't spent a lot of time researching it, but there is something there with benefits and, and, and people are now the public. I think the United States will probably legalize cannabis across the country probably in the next 20 years. It is, there is this whole thing, like people are starting to be like, I think we were lied to. I think, I think we were lied to about cannabis because they're starting to, starting to see the truth. Now, of course, I'm not advocating for cannabis in any way necessarily, but 
but I am advocating for the truth and then let people make their own decisions on it. So, and... Gaspard Koenig, je ne sais pas si Génération Libre... Free Génération Libre, uh, did they give their opinion about the uh, cannabis of the usage and therapy? And uh, no, we didn't uh, write anything about that, but Terra Nova did it before. And, uh, you know, sometimes it happens. And, um, you know, as a personal point of view and in the future works, of course, we are in favor of legalization of uh, cannabis in general, uh, like in Colorado, in Uruguay. You know, we are very, very aware of, of the situation and we have good feedbacks and it is a, an opportunity to, to, you know, to have decrease also of consumption. And you can also, you know, as I said before, have the opportunity to regulate things and then um, you, you need to be clear and and uh, in, in France, we have five million consumers of cannabis, as we said. So we need to uh, really, you know, uh, work on that and be aware of the situation. Moreover, as Aaron said, in, in France also there is a pr problem of lobbying on those topics. Uh, you know, e even though, according to me, it's less industrial than ideological, but anyway, you have an association like NP, which is uh, financed at to 70 billion of euros by uh, public public authorities. So you you have you know really that idea of you know uh, hygiene beyond all this reflection, and you have Professor Claude Roux, who is you know working on that and different laws like Eva law for cigarette they're very active make campaigns and you know they have ideas which are very uh, clear uh, and and Dr. Blo will tell you that you know he has very clear opinion on things and um, they actually took a lot of uh, money not from the industrial industries but for, but from authorities and governments and the objective was propaganda and uh, you know and then what about information well uh, the need of information is, of course, uh, they, I mean, fundamental because the, the state, the governments must be must be neutral, and they must, of course, you know, be there. But give the opportunity to everyone to be free to have education, to have information, and then it's up to everyone to choose, you know, to make its own choice. So the objective, objective of public health saying we want to reduce to, you know, different death is not a good objective. The good objective is to say we must let everyone to take his own decision on different topics and facts. That's it. Then you have different things and refined or sophisticated arguments. But the main idea is to give people that opportunity. And uh, this is so important important for societies and, uh, uh, you know, for uh, people in general. And then it can be applied in different fields. So I think in France, we need to really make an effort. And finally, for the U.S., yes, as uh, uh, Aaron said that, you know, um, according, I mean, apart from the uh, po politicians, we have a lot of, you know, ex experiences made. Uh, you in Shire, you have free state projects, uh, recreating a society without states with 20,000 persons, you know, being together, being hippies, and anyway, and um, other things very <laughs> foolish and sometimes very good because it's it's fantastic that they exist. And uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, Union Shire is a good example because the good statistics, you know, they have the only state in the states where the belt, security belt, is not uh, compulsory. And in fact, you can realize that 75% of the people put it and uh, you know while the other states it's like for 80 84% so this is my conclusion so you know 70% New Shire are informed that informed that it's better to put the security belt instead of having accidents they decided to doing you know willingly while in the other states they decide not to follow the law so you know this is so good and so interesting to see the price of freedom and having people the opportunity to decide for themselves so I'd like to come back to vaping and other regulation attempts to talk about a perverse logic that can be seen because some associations against nicotism uh, explain that, uh, yeah, it's more uh, or less dangerous, uh, but it's less dangerous to vape than to smoke. But when you read the official messages from the government, um, e-cigarettes shouldn't be recommended. So it's a logic where, in a way, associations against tobacco, uh, the aim of which is normally to have people stop smoking, keep um, smokers, keep 
smokers smoking by not informing them correctly of the potential of vaping. And, uh, you know, I think that's, that's uh, go back to money as well. I think you look at the survival, uh, these groups want to survive, you know, because here's something that can actually kill their livelihood. Because if there's no more smoking, you know, if everybody is educated and they say, hey, I can enjoy um, nicotine in the social side of it and the ritual side of it without dying, um, you know, in many ways that would be a threat to something that is a, a lot of money in, in, when you're in tobacco control. You've made your livelihood and your reputation and your pride in, in tobacco control, and now all of a sudden you're faced with not having anything to control anymore. You know, that's a threat. In, in the States, um, uh, I was told about uh, North Dakota, you know, which is a small state in the far north part of, of the country. They were talking about banning, they were talking about banning smoking and completely. And, and the, some of the tobacco control groups were actually against that. <laughs> <laughs> they want to lose their job. They don't want to lose their job, yeah. But they, they will say things like, well, it's never, you know, that hasn't been shown to work. Well, they say this, but it makes no sense because if your job is to stop people from smoking and here's a law that will do it, which I, I don't believe that would be a good law. I'm not on the record saying I like that law, but why would, to, why would tobacco control be against it? You know, it comes back to, to money and I think... Um, these things need to be exposed and, and in an intelligent way. And um, I'm pretty excited for the world to, to hear some of these stories because uh, I think they're gonna, I think they're gonna be pretty upset. Yeah. Gaspar Koenig, dans, dans un des articles que vous avez... Gaspar Koenig, in one of the articles that you wrote in the Figaro, you refer to Michel Foucault, indicating that the state is uh, trying to. Um, tame bodies uh, it's what Michel Foucault said it uh, was to understand this, that the state tried to assimilate vaping uh, to um, tobacco smoking yeah Foucault uh, talked about the, the issue of the gesture because as I was saying in those uh, bills in the arguments uh, underlying them is the issue of the gesture the movement of the, of the hand uh, to, to take a cigarette, to take an e-cigarette, to um, blow out smoke or vapor, in fact. So the issue, uh, it was about controlling a gesture, uh, and that's novelty. It, it's unseen uh, because uh, what analyzed Foucault was in the framework of prisons and hospitals how well the how uh, the authorities were going to analyze the gestures and behaviors of people, the way they could raise their arm uh, and walk, and how the aim of that could, was to manage to make uh, out of the body of everyone uh, some kind of puppet uh, that you could monitor at will. But once again, it was limited to uh, hospitals and uh, prisons and military barracks. Even though Foucault uses that as a metaphor for the rest of the society, but it's the first time, I think, I may be mistaken, but it's the first time that the state tries to punish a gesture as such that is a nuisance uh, for nobody. And uh, Foucault is always a very interesting author for us because he's written a lot about liberalism and he's got a very positive vision of this um, uh, set of ideas, d despite the impression that he may give. Are there any questions for the speakers, for Gaspar Koenig and Anne Beaver? Uh, do, do, do you have any questions about this um, welfare state, in a way? In a way? Yeah, thank you for uh, those very interesting opinions. I've got a question regarding the analysis of society and of the behavior of people. As a vaping professional and a vapor myself, I was submitted on a regular basis to attacks in the street uh, by people who uh, wanted to save me by um, uh, making me uh, stop this uh, gesture, the, they didn't know the interest of which. Uh, it's um, the, the same gesture that saves me, in fact, 
and that used to kill me. So after some explanations, they change attitude. Uh, either they uh, listen to me and they uh, change opinions, or they say, yes, but in fact, you don't know, uh, I don't know, and I'm jealous of you, and I'm going to fight uh, uh, against you. And uh, trying to prove you that you're wrong, even though I am wrong, and I'm going to defend a stupid idea. So I would like to know why society refuses innovation, why society doesn't open up the field of culture, that is to get informed before you can make a judgment. Why is that that people are, s are sick and, are, uh, and fear what is new? Has there been too much novelty in the last century to be in this, in this situation? It is the uh, safety first principle. Uh, again, Gaspar maybe. Well, the precaution principle or the safety first principle, if it was applied uh, exclusively, people would innovate a lot because to take precautions is why, uh, the only way to, to take uh, really precautions is, is to try new things. So I don't know how they attacked you because, you know, I have smoked in the past, uh, I mean, uh, in the street, and I was no, never attacked by anybody. I don't, I can't understand how people can uh, actually want to fight uh, freedom, uh, to fight something that do not does not disturb them at all. So how can you fight again, for example, uh, marriage for everybody, uh, the marriage of hom homosexuals? Uh, and it's it's because people can't distinguish anymore between morale and law. What relates to the civil sphere and the political sphere? Law exists to uh, authorize those that, uh, what, what is not a nuisance uh, to uh, the others. Then morale, the collective morale is there to, uh, as a matter of fact, try and convince by uh, examples, uh, by uh, different arguments, uh, but you never uh, fight better than what you authorize. Uh, same thing as um, uh, alcohol drinking in the US, uh, the, the, the American um, natural spontaneous uh, action was to uh, set up org organizations of people who committed them, who committed not to drink anymore, and to try and convince the others that it was better for their health. So you distinguish your know, morality than politics. It, well, if you do, uh, society is a sounder. You know, you look at the, the human, you know, you look back into history and you see all kinds of examples. I mean, even um, in the United States, uh, Margaret Sanger was j was put in jail for um, condoms. You know, I mean, these were illegal. Condoms were illegal. Uh, at one point, uh, certain governments were banning forks because they said, you know, God gave you fingers. You don't need forks. Uh, um, people putting in jail for believing that the earth is round. Uh, um, in, in the U.S. and in uh, other places, when cars were invented, um, people were very angry. In fact, even in my hometown, they would parade around a car and they would put a, a Satan in it. Okay, these weird things. I mean, now this was a long time ago, but um, that you know, people people are, are uh, in many ways it's very difficult for them to make big changes and to understand them because they don't take time to understand them. That's the situation here and. And, you know, that would be my encouragement to, to people all around the world is, hey, we need to take time to listen and to learn. And, and, and people around the world are not doing that. And, and then so you see these things where it allows the corporate interest to make these very short little headlines that change people's opinions because people don't read the articles and they don't read other articles. They don't seek the truth. And so cars in the US and some places were banned and people were attacking drivers like they were attacking you for smoking drivers. I mean, now we all drive cars, okay? 
Um, you know, even in France here in the in the 1600s, there was a there was a situation where the the cl the cloth weavers wanted to make buttons, but the button guild <laughs> went after them and and got uh, you know rules made that that people that were weaving cloth had to ask permission from judges in order to get new innovations for the cloth buttons, okay? And, and there were fees and fines and people were put in jail for this over buttons, okay? Um, that probably not until the public was like, hey, we kind of like the ability to use cloth buttons if we want, did that ever change? Because initially I'm guessing people didn't care. And in this case, what we have is we have a public who sees you know the cloud chasing and the the nude women basically that are all over the internet that are with vaping hashtags and this sort of thing and they say oh this doesn't this doesn't look that healthy you know they say these things but they don't look they don't learn they don't listen to scientists or doctors they make very quick judgments and i think in your case you're being attacked because they're assuming you're like smoking or you're like the other vaping people that they see and that's where the whole we have to we have to be deeper as a as a humanity we have to think deeper and we need to and and we need to listen before we talk and i think that's what we're not doing right now une autre question another question i just would like to add an example that is not exactly about the same subject but the first inventor of the first um uh, a machine uh, to knotting machine uh, to it presented his invention to uh, Victoria to Queen Victoria and she said okay uh, kill him Gaspar Koenig you are libertarian uh, I think and maybe you are in favor of uh, the elimination of the government and of the minister of the Ministry of Health, just like um, Paul in the, in the U.S. wants to have uh, the smallest um, government possible in the U.S. Um, so, do you think that we should deal with healthcare ourselves, with philosophers and healthcare professionals? Well, to, to close the Ministry of Culture, maybe not health. Well, in the philosophy that I defend, I'm a libertarian because uh, li liberty is of a moral, not moral nature and a societal nature. Uh, but I think I, I don't believe in the minimum state. I think the state has got a role to play in all uh, public areas, and the prism of its action has got to be the individual autonomy. Um, there is to, to say people should be autonomous is not enough. It's, to, it's about giving them their, the, the means to be autonomous. There are many public policies to lead, and the current policies uh, are uh, conducted from the point of view of hetero, heteronomy. Uh, so you oblige people because you, you think people are, are not capable uh, to uh, behave the way they should. So that's why you know they uh, pass laws and etc. Uh, there's one a month, but nevertheless the state has got to play uh, an important role, and that role and that kind of liberalism is a French kind of liberalism that is revolutionary. This is what uh, they uh, qualified as uh, liberal Jacobinism. So without any intermediary between uh, individuals and the state. And, and the state may be a um, liberating force for individuals. Aaron, maybe a, qu a more specific question regarding your documentary. Uh, the, the current, uh, the, uh, there, there will be a French version, uh, I think, by the end of the year. And, and I'm pretty certain that when it comes out, um, I know that when it's in theaters, hopefully here in France, that we, there will be a, a French, there will be French subtitles on it. I don't know if we'll be able to, I, I think that's probably the best way, um, you know, and hopefully, you know, even in uh, uh, maybe a chance in Cannes, you know, and, and, and in theaters. I know there's been a lot of interest here in, uh, in Paris, and uh, yes, there will be a, a French 
There will be a French version of it, yes, almost certainly. Yes. You're still a bit shy with your project. You don't want to tell us uh, no, I, I, about some of the people you... Oh yeah, you well we haven't announced met? we haven't announced everybody that's in the film yet because we're you know holding back for uh, dramatic for a dramatic uh, reason. We have we have some of the the biggest and best thinkers in in the space. Of course, we didn't get everybody just because that's the nature of these sort of things. But um, we, you know we do have Han like the inventor of the modern e-cigarette. We also have uh, some other working on another interview possibly yet um, with someone else who is involved with inventing e-cigarettes. Um, but yeah, for the most part, I mean, we we have uh, we do have someone who worked with uh, the tobacco control movements. Who is uh, we consider him to be a whistleblower, who will give us a little bit of insight behind the scenes and how um, the facts are not, you know, they're not the the most important thing with tobacco control. The facts are not um, that there are other motives. So yes, we haven't announced all of that sort of thing, but. Uh, um, we have primarily the film is focused on on making a, a a case for what is vaping, how is it related to tobacco, and the 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 health situation, the facts about it, and then what shall what shall the public do? What should we do about this? And, and so um, we have I think the the best interviews we could get um, in those cases, including a former executive director of the World Health Organization former uh, CEO of the World Medical Organization. They're all um, on the record sat down with us for a couple hours and we have some really good stuff with that. So, um, yeah, I don't know if I'll have any new announcements for you today here on who will be in the film, but uh, do stay tuned, it will be exciting. Aaron Gaspar, il y a un sujet dont on n'a pas vraiment parlé concernant le... Uh, the, there's a subject that we've not yet really talked about is uh, concerning tobacco control. That's uh, tax uh, taxes that uh, the state receives every, every year. It's 13 billion euros in France. Now, health uh, ex expenditure is uh, superior to that. But do you think the state will listen to vapors when uh, you know that uh, those taxes are part of the budget of the state that, uh, and it needs a budget? Well, regarding behavioral um, taxation, those who gave the best opinions on the subject, oh, Sunstein, and I can't remember the other one in, in this book, Nudge, that came out in uh, 2009 in, in the US, two Chicago professors who explained what could be a libertarian um, paternalism. And this nudge has become very popular because uh, within Dong, Dong Street, uh, there's, it was exported to, so, well, a unit that exported their uh, works to the White House. So what is it, nudge? It is about uh, saying you're in a school restaurant and you can have at your disposal a hamburger or a salad. What is the role of the state? The first option is to say no hamburger to forbid hamburgers and just to have the salad. The second option is to tax the hamburger so, so that only rich people can be sick. Uh, the third option is not to do anything to uh, let people uh, make their choices. And the fourth option is a compromise. Uh, it's to say we have observed that most people who get to the restaurant choose the first product they see independently of their taste. So the role of the state um, would limit itself to uh, putting the salad uh, first. So it's a wittier um, policy than uh, behavioral taxation uh, that I oppose. And if you want to cut taxes in France, I've got many recipes, many ideas to cut public expenditure government in the states it is a big part of the budget no doubt I mean I uh, the numbers are even crazier obviously over there but uh, one of the things that I would say is yes absolutely the government will allow for this because at the end of the day we're the people at least in most countries that elect these people so if we demand it they will do it and yes yes unfortunately that means some lesser revenue sources that may need to be found in other ways um, but at the end of the day that's really not that shouldn't be a relevant part of this discussion because at the end of the day, human life is not something that you budget for. And if you can save people's lives by allowing, that's all I'm at, all I would the theoretically advocate for would be allowing people to make a choice.
That's all. You don't have to pay for it. You don't have to do any of that stuff. Just allow it. But knowing that that will hurt their budgets, I don't think that that's a moral or ethical discussion anybody should be having is, well, what should we do about the budget? You know, and in Ireland, I've been told that they actually had this discussion in their Senate and that uh, it, uh, these are bizarre things. But I think at the end of the day, if the people demand it, we will find ways. I mean, we are all innovative people here. We can find ways to pay for schools and pay for whatever things that they want to pay for in the government. But, but t taxing and discouraging something that will save people's lives is not one of them. Je vais vous poser une dernière question, euh, Aaron et, et Gaspard, et puis peut-être qu'en qu fin de, de conférence, on pourra... Je vais vous poser une dernière question, et peut-être qu'à la fin de la conférence, nous pourrions avoir le trailer du documentaire de nouveau. Juste comme pour les autres participants, je voudrais savoir votre perception, votre analyse de vaping dans 10 ans. Est-ce que vous pensez que dans 10 ans, le nombre de vapeurs sera sur le nombre de smokers Yeah, I believe that it, that absolutely will be the case. I mean, you look at the AM and FM radio, same sort of corruption going on back in the day where FM radio was better, but the AM radio people had all the money, and so they, they found a way to get it pushed for, I think it was 20 years, where the money, you know, although it wasn't a life or death situation, so I would, my, my uh, understanding would be that this will happen a lot faster because it is such an important topic. How can we deny a billion deaths? That is too important. We cannot sit here and um, talk about budgets and things like that. Not us, but I mean, they cannot do that. They must act. And once they allow it, I think, you know, judging by everything that I've seen, that the people who are smoking, when they, when they have the truth and they, they see that this is something that they, they is healthier and tastes better, they can taste food again, they can breathe again, why wouldn't they? Why would they not? And as technology gets better and innovations in vaping get better, they will deal with all these little things that people keep bringing up that are bad things. They will deal with them all. And then it will be the undisputed choice of what you should do if you're a smoker. I mean, again, their choice. I'm all for choice, like him. There's, there's nothing wrong with choice, but I believe that at that time, and this may not even be 10 years, this may be four years, five years. I think we're going to have a big battle up ahead in the next three or four years. It's going to be pretty bad. But I think at the end of the day, the people with the truth on their side will win and vapors uh, will retain the right to do what's healthier for them, the, the choice, and, and smokers will be educated and they will make the choice. And we will see a very different world in about you know five to ten years. Yes. Gaspard, finalement, tout va bien. Gaspard, the consumers will win, do you believe? Well, vaping in 2025, uh, I will answer quickly. If uh, in 2005 we'd wondered um, at such conference how, uh, what would be the case in 2015, nobody would have thought about vape, vaping. Uh, and maybe in 10 years' time, there will be different things uh, other than vaping, uh, patches, connected objects uh, directly related to Google and that will, you know, uh, deliver the right amount of nicotine, but well, the f we won't see the, the the future if we just uh, focus on the past, just like uh, lawmakers do. Thank you to to both of you. Um, let's watch the trailer again. Hypocrites and liars all from showing their face But the damage has been done Our battle's not quite won So let's take it to the streets Let's take it to the streets And sing for the sun
Merci beaucoup.